In these videos, I'm gonna be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. In this video, we're gonna be going over simple harmonic motion. So let's start with a picture. We've got an object sitting on a flat surface, which has a mass of M. It's attached to a spring, which has a spring constant of K, and the spring is attached to a wall. Now, if we do a free body diagram of the mass and we use Newton's second law, we'll have that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. The only force that we have here is gonna be the spring force, and the spring force is gonna be negative k times x. If x is positive, the spring is gonna be stretched, so the force is gonna be pointing to the left, or negative. If x is negative, then the spring is gonna be compressed, and the spring force will be pointing to the right. Now we can take the mass, and we can bring that over to the right-hand side of our equation, and what we get is the acceleration is equal to negative k over m times x. The differential equation for simple harmonic motion is going to look like acceleration is equal to o negative omega squared times x, where omega is the angular frequency of the system. So that means that for our setup, that our angular frequency squared has to equal k over m. So if we take the square root of that, we'll get that the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m. And we'll put a box around that one because that's one that we're going to want to put on our formula sheet. Now, if we solve this differential equation, we'll get an equation for our position as a function of time. So what we'll end up with is a sine omega t plus phi. And then at the end, we've got plus xe. So a is going to be the amplitude of that wave. Omega is going to be the angular frequency. And phi is going to be the phase shift. Xe on the end is just going to be the equilibrium position of the mass. Most of the time, this is just going to be zero. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Now, if we take the derivative of this equation, we can get an equation for our velocity. And we take the derivative again, and we get the acceleration. So let's take a look at a problem. We've got an object attached to a spring undergoes simple harmonic motion. The object has a mass of 6.2 kilograms, and the spring has a spring constant of 169 newtons per meter. The equilibrium position of the object is 0 meters i-hat, so 0 meters in the x-direction. The initial position of the object is minus 0 0.8 meters, and the initial velocity is negative 2.2 meters per second. The question is asking us to find an equation for our position, equation for our velocity, and equation for our acceleration. So I've just copied down the equation that we had before for our position. Now you notice that our equation for a position is in terms of sine. We could have chosen to use cos for our equation for our position. It's not going to make a difference. The only thing that's going to change is going to be the phase shift. But just keep in mind that sine and cos are both the same thing, just shifted to the left or the right. So what we need to do is we need to solve for all of the constants in this equation. The easiest place to start here is going to be with the angular frequency because we can use the equation that we came up with on the last page. So the angular frequency is going to be the square root of k over m. So we'll get the square root of 169 newtons per meter divided by 6.2 kilograms. And we'll get 5.221 radians per second. So what the angular frequency is telling us is it's giving us an idea of how fast this oscillation is going to complete one cycle. So it's sort of related to the frequency and the period. We got an angular frequency of about 5.2 rads per second. So if we think about a full circle, that's going to be 2 pi radians, which is roughly 6. So that means that when this thing gets set into motion, it's going to take a little over a second to complete a cycle. And the other thing we know is that our equilibrium position is equal to 0 because it was given in the problem. Now we can use the initial conditions that they gave us to solve for the amplitude and the phase shift. So this question is the worst case scenario where the initial position is not zero and the initial velocity is not zero. So if either the initial position is zero or the initial velocity is zero, it's going to make it a little easier to solve for these constants. Since both of these are non-zero, it's going to be a little bit harder. We can start by taking our equation for position and plugging in t is equal to zero. So when t is equal to zero, we get that x naught, the initial position, is equal to the amplitude times sine of the phase shift. Then we can do the same thing for the velocity. So we get that the initial velocity is equal to omega times a times cos of the phase shift. Then we can take the angular frequency in the velocity equation and bring that over to the left-hand side. So I'm just going to call these equations 1 and 2. 
Now to solve for the amplitude in this case, we can take equation one, square it, and add it to equation two squared. So the thing to keep in mind is that sine squared plus co squared is equal to one. So if we can get sine squared plus co squared in our equation, we can replace that with one and get rid of the phase shift from our equation to solve for the amplitude. So if we do that, we'll get a squared sine squared plus a squared co squared is equal to the initial position squared plus the initial velocity divided by the angular frequency, all squared. Now we can factor out the a squared and replace the sine squared plus co squared with one, then take the square root of both sides of the equation and we'll get that the amplitude is equal to plus or minus the square root of the initial position squared plus the initial velocity over the angular frequency squared. Now we've got a plus or minus in this equation. We're just gonna leave that in there for now and we'll deal with it later when we do the phase shift. Now when we plug in our numbers, we get that the amplitude is plus or minus 0.9042 meters. So we'll leave it like that for now and we'll solve for the phase shift. So for the phase shift, the thing to keep in mind is that sine divided by cos is equal to tan. So what we can do is take equation one and divide it by equation two to solve for the phase shift. So on the left hand side, we get that the initial position divided by the initial velocity over the angular frequency, and that's gonna be equal to a sine theta over a cos theta. Now the a over a, that's gonna cancel out, and the sine over cos, we can replace that with tan. And then on the left side, where we've got that three layers of fractions, I always just try to remember that if I have three layers of fractions, I could take whatever's on the bottom and flip it up to the top. So that's gonna give us omega x naught over v naught is equal to tan phi. Now we can arctan that and solve for our phase shift. Now we end up with a phase shift of 1.086 radians. Now what I like to do at this point is just put that back into our original equation for our position at time is equal to zero and just test to see if we get the right number. So we have the choice to make the amplitude positive or negative. Let's just stick with a positive amplitude. That's usually what we do. And then if the answer turns out to be wrong, then what we can do is just adjust our phase shift so that we get the right phase here. So if we plug in x naught is equal to our amplitude times sine of our phase shift, if we leave the amplitude as positive and the phase shift as it is, then we end up with positive 0.8 meters. But remember that what we want is that the initial position is supposed to be negative 0.8 meters. So what we can do is we can take our phase shift and we can add half of a full circle onto there. So if we add half a circle, we'll add pi to our phase shift, and that gives us a phase shift of 4.228. Now if we plug that back into our equation for our initial position, we get that our initial position is negative 0.8. So the correct phase shift to use with a positive amplitude is going to be 4.228. Now we can write our final equation for our position is going to be the amplitude, 0.9. 042 sine of the angular frequency 5.221 times time plus our phase shift of 4.228 and that'll be our answer for a once we've got the equation for our position the rest of this is pretty straightforward we can take the derivative of our position with respect to time and that's going to give us an equation for our velocity so what we'll get is that the sine is going to turn into a cos and then we'll have to multiply the amplitude by our angular frequency out front. So we'll end up with the velocity is 4.721 cos 5.221t plus 4.228. Then for part C, we want the acceleration so we can take the derivative of our velocity with respect to time. Our cos is gonna turn into negative sine and then we'll get another copy of the angular frequency multiplied out front. So we'll end up with the acceleration is negative 24.64 sine 5.221t plus 4.228. So when you're looking at simple harmonic motion questions, what I usually do is I try and figure out what type of question it is first. Are we talking about a simple pendulum, a physical pendulum, or a mass on a spring? That's going to tell you which equation you need to use for your angular frequency. Once you have the angular frequency and the equilibrium position, then you can take a look at the initial conditions. If one of your initial conditions is zero, then that's gonna make it a little bit easier to solve for the amplitude and the phase shift. But in like in this case, if both of them are non-zero, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but as long as you know the tricks to get there, it's not too bad. Once you have the equation for your position, then 
Anything else they ask you, sometimes they'll ask you, you know, what's the velocity at time of three seconds? Well, once we have our position equation, we can take our derivatives and find our velocity and our acceleration. And now we can solve for the position, velocity, or acceleration at any point in time. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.